So, hello students. Uh, welcome to the next session of the human anatomy series. And in succession to the previous video, what I have uploaded was about the boundaries of the cavernous sinus. So today's topic of the discussion will be mainly focusing upon the applied anatomy or the clinical anatomy of the clinical aspect, clinical anatomy of the cavernous sinus. So students beginning with the applied anatomy of the cavernous sinus or the uh, clinical anatomy, this has been a very favorite question in the most of the professional exams where you are asked to write about a paragraph or a short note on the applied anatomy or the clinical anatomy of the cavernous sinus. So students beginning with just a one line brief discussion, brief definition for the cavernous sinus. So students, as you all know that the cavernous sinus is a dural venous sinus. It is one of the paired dural venous sinus, which is lying in the body of the sphenoid bone. And this sinus, when talking in internally, this sinus has been divided is, is divided into a number of spaces into a number of spaces or caverns by trabeculae and these trabeculae they are very prominent in the dead as compared to the living so students when talking of the boundaries of the cavernous sinus as you all uh, as i've already discussed in the previous video that the floor and the medial wall the floor and the medial wall is formed by the end osteal layer of the dura mater whereas the roof and the lateral walls are formed by the meningeal layer of the dura mater so students uh, beginning with the topic that is the applied anatomy of the cavernous sinus so the first point what comes into discussion it is about the thrombosis of the cavernous sinus so students as you all know that the cavernous sinus is having a, a relations it is having relations with the uh, most of the very prominent structures that is the internal carotid artery the facial vein and the uh, uh, very large num a number of the cranial nerves that is the cranial nerve third fourth and sixth so these are the structures what are going to lie in some or the other in very close proximity to the cavernous sinus so beginning with students the thrombosis of the cavernous sinus it is mostly caused by any kind of a sepsis or infection what is going to occur in the dangerous area of the face. So students, whether it can be an in, the infection can either occur in the dangerous area of the face, then the nasal cavities or in the paranasal sinuses, the paranasal air sinuses. So students, this point, you should make this very clear that any of the infections, what is going to occur in the dangerous area of the face, or in the nasal cavity or in the paranasal air sinuses they are going to they can there is a possibility that the infections of these areas can revert back and that can move in a retrograde direction and can cause thrombosis of the cavernous sinus so students just a brief discussion as to what are the danger what is the dangerous area of the face so students as you all know that the facial veins and its deeper related veins that is the deeper fa uh, facial vein the facial veins and the associated deeper veins associated with with it they are mostly valveless so since they are devoid of valves any kind of the facial vein is going to communicate through the to the cavernous sinus by the means of the emissary veins so students the facial veins is having a communication with the cavernous sinus through the emissary veins as and as you all might be knowing that this the facial veins and the other associated veins they are devoid of valves so any kind of infection what is going to occur that can proceed in a retrograde direction and that can ultimately go and cause thrombosis of the cavernous sinus so just a, what is the dangerous area of the face so any of the infections, what is the dangerous area of the face in this diagram, as you can see, I have highlighted over here. So I have stippled over here. This is the dangerous area of the face. That is the lower part of the nose and the upper lip. These areas, this area comprises of the dangerous area of the face. And why they have been called as the dangerous area of the face? Because any of the infections, any of the pustules or the pimples, what are going to occur in the upper lip and the side of the nose, they can, they can have a retrograde spread to the cavernous sinus. Any of the infections, they can proceed through uh, in a retrograde manner and can ultimately, is they are going to affect, they can 
even uh, they can proceed in a retrograde manner and they can cause thrombosis of the cavernous sinus. So students, be very careful whether it be any kind of pustules or pimples what are going to occur in the upper lip or on the side of the nose and even on the cheek area. So the cheek area can also be included in the dangerous area of the face. So any of the infections what are what can occur in this region, these infections can spread in a retrograde manner and they can cause thrombosis of the cavernous sinus since the facial vein one thing more we, what you should remember is since the facial veins and the other deeper veins which are associated to it they are devoid of valves so any kind of an infection what is going to occur in this particular area can have a retrograde spread can have a retrograde sp spread so uh, that can lead to the thrombosis of the cavernous sinus so next moving on and this thrombosis of the cavernous sinus can lead to a varied variety of symptoms that can manifest in the form of the nervous symptoms, the venous symptoms. So when talking of the nervous symptoms, what are mostly seen during the thrombosis of the cavernous sinus, it is that there can occur severe pain in the eye. So if the infect, if there is a thrombosis of the cavernous sinus, there can occur severe pain in the eye and the forehead region and that too in the area of the distribution of the ophthalmic vein. So as students have already said the facial veins, the ophthalmic veins, they are devoid of valves. So any kind of infection can have a retrograde spread and they can cause thrombosis. So first symptoms what are mostly seen it is the nervous symptoms moving on to the venous symptoms. So the next complication, the next symptoms what are mostly manifested it is the venous symptoms and that can manifest in the form of marked edema of the eyelids. So there, if there is a thrombosis, if there is an infection which is has proceeded to the cavernous sinus that can manifest in the form of a marked edema of the upper edema of the eyelids, edema of the cornea, and that to the root of the nose can also get affected. And uh, one more thing that is the venous symptoms, it is mostly going to comprise of the exophthalmos can also occur that the eyeball is going to have a protruded appearance. The eyeball can show the, 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 the exophthalmos and that exophthalmos is mostly due to congestion of the ophthalmic veins. So students, then the th third and the last point what I need to discuss over here that any since I have already discussed about the boundaries and the contents of the cavernous sinus in my previous video. So here, as you might, might be knowing that the communication between the cavernous sinus and the internal carotid artery can also occur due to any kind of a head injury. So students, if there is any kind of a head injury, there can occur a communication between the cavernous sinus and the internal carotid artery. And when this is going to happen, what is there that the eyeball is going to pulsate and protrude with each heartbeat. And this pulsation and protruding of the eyeball with every heartbeat, this is very commonly, most commonly, which is called as the pulsating exophthalmos. So this is one of the other uh, symptoms what are mostly seen in the patients who are having a sepsis or an infection which has spread from either of the dangerous area of the face in the nasal cavities or in the paranasal sinuses. So this was a deep a brief discussion about the applied anatomy or the clinical anatomy of the cavernous sinus. So students, if you do like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And if you have any queries or comments, do go and comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching.